it looks like the bark is going to come off of the tree pretty good here. I've heard that you can get it off any time in the winter. I don't think I've ever been out in July to do this. Uh, the best time is in the spring when the sap is flowing. The cambrium, the growing layer of the tree, is uh, very active and the bark isn't hardly attached to the tree at all. It just about falls off of the log and typically that's when the, when the, uh, when the bark is harvested off of the tree. Uh, in the past, before I had this machine and that, I could just walk, go up to the tree and pull the bark off with my bare hands. And I've done that, but uh, it's a lot harder work and I'm always trying to find ways to make it easier on myself. So I can tell by, by the way things look here, I was a little doubtful a while ago. But I can tell that uh, one way or the other this bark's going to come off. So maestro, power. Tool's already slipped out of medium. Go. If I were shooting this, I'd want to get it from this from this angle here. As the, as the tool goes into the wood, not particularly on this cut. You know, there's going to be many passes. But this view that I'm looking at right here is the one that sends me to the moon. This <laughs> if I had my way, I'd like to get the camera over here. Okay. Okay, keep it nice and short. But tell us what it's patterned after and, and, and where you got the idea. This is a little tool that I had made by a blacksmith friend of mine. It's made exactly the way I wanted. This is probably the fourth one and I've had this for a number of years now. It's patterned after a stitch ripper that uh, my mother had. She showed me how to use it. it. It hooks under the material to guide the tool. This slips underneath the bark and then it's pulled in this direction and there's a little cutting edge here that slices the bark and the tool like this uh, when it pulls through the tree it follows the fibers of the log so that it, uh, it, it, it's a perfect device for rendering what I want out of the tree which are bundles of bark fiber and that's what we're going to do right now we're going to hook this puppy up to the winch and pull the bark off of this uh, mid-july hickory tree here with can as much grace as we can, can yes we just before you do that yeah this is the point this is the yeah like where it is anytime this is the part of the tr uh, tool that goes underneath the bark and it keeps it, 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 this is the part that slices the material it's kind of sharp right in here and this is the part that we pull with the winch. And it goes in there and it causes the bark to split along the fibers that it grew. And that's what we're going to do now. Is it? I'm not trying to be a wise guy. Did I do it? No, that's fine. All right. All right. Usually I need a hammer to get this sucker in here. The, oh, oh, the point. It's kind of wore off on here. If I was any good, I would have filed it sharp again, but I haven't. And, uh... When I was rehearsing this, it was a tell you what. Pretty nice log here. Looks good. you or not. Ah, this is the way it's supposed to be here. We're going to be done here in 15 minutes. There might be enough bark to make those six chairs in this log too. Doesn't look like there's a lot of knots on here. Yes sir, and it's coming off all on one side too. See, a tree that's grown out in the forest where there's competition on all sides will grow straight. A tree that has 
forest on one side and open on the other side will grow in a helical pattern. And sometimes it's hard to read that from the bark on a tree. Of course, a guy like me that splits the tree up wants it to split straight rather than helical, but I don't want to really have my way. So here, turn the whole machine onto the side of the log if we can. Well, yes, it was more orderly. It's got less knots on it, the park grew straighter, and it uh, felled without splitting. What else did it do? Uh, it did. It did what it's supposed to. Uh, you saw how the tool went straight through, and uh, the, the winch didn't bind up. I think a lot of it had to do, it's a smaller tree. On a smaller tree, the bark is thinner, but uh, a guy like me that wants to use these uh, the bark off of these large trees has to be able to work with thick bark off of large trees too. That's why I have the winch. The first time I used this tool, I just pulled it through with my hands, and, and it worked. If you get here in the springtime, it, a lot of times you can do that. You don't need as much muscle. Uh, this is a little bit late in the year, and uh, that's just the way it is. I'm I'm uh, I'm. I'm, 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 I'm ready to roll a lot. Let's go. That was nice, I hope it was nice. Look right here. Right here, we are on brute strength. Oh yeah, hot dog, see that? This is the way I used to do it, bare-handed. Oh, this is a fine strip of bark here, I gotta tell you. Oh, mighty fine. Look at this, feast your eyes, not a knot on it. Yep, not a Oh man. There's enough bark for a whole chair seat in this piece right here. I'll bet you. I'll bet you there is. The whole log could go. You know what I mean? Okay. Yeah? Why 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 is the bark? The the bark is the hardest material for me to obtain. It always has been. I use uh, walnut trees and oak trees for the chair. You can make a chair out of hickory, but uh, for some reason or other, uh, I'm, I'm working with walnut and red oak. The walnut trees are dying in the forest as are red oak trees. I, I, the goal of my enterprise is to, to uh, use peripheral resources, trees that are uh, either dying or uh, don't have a market value and in that respect, this hickory bark it gives me the most pleasure because there is there. I, I don't think there's a known purpose for this material. Uh, it it, it uh, it's a nuisance. It makes sparks when you cut it with a chainsaw. It's the ugliest thing in the industry. Hickory bark is, and yet by the process that I've uh, the process that I've uh, uh, worked at over the years, I can make something that I, I I think and quite a few other people think is pretty decent. I make this woven bark seat that. Uh, it's traditional, and it's strong, and uh, uh, authentic. And uh, so it gives me a lot of satisfaction to be able to uh, get the bark. And I work really hard. Uh, uh, a disproportionate amount of my energy has gone into the quest for hickory bark over the